everyone catch investor back to another video for today so let's talk about arguably the second most hype ai stock in the market no it's not nvidia it's actually ticker symbol ai it's c3 ai now the stock is up over 250 percent year to date now you might say okay it makes sense with all the ai hype we've seen nvidia's guidance so probably c3 ai's business is booming right well not really, at least not yet. So the second part should be of your assumption. Well, it's just that they have a ticker symbol that is AI. There is a bull market with regards to AI, so they're gaining traction from that. And here is where you, your point is probably more correct. Now, recently they had an investor meeting and although they try to present some new information, well, actually, it's not really new information or information that is groundbreaking. Maybe it was packaged a little bit more different. But overall, I don't think they gave us more information or information that maybe would justify the current valuation of this company. They did show us a couple of slides that were a bit interesting, such as the fact that pilot acceleration quarter to date is up three times. The sales cycles are shortening. So if you look at fiscal year 16 was 13.3 months. Right now we're fiscal year 23 Q4. So actually the last quarter, it was 3.7 months. But this slide to me was a bit, well, misleading. Because if you look at the typical sales cycle slide, you can see that the 3.7 months is only for the pilot sales cycle. Then you have three to six months for pilot delivery, and then another zero to two months for to conclude the conversion contract. So to say that the sales cycle is shortening, I would say the pilot sales cycle is shortening. Now, a pilot doesn't really mean that much. Then they showed us the qualified pipeline growth. Again, this has increased 2x from fiscal year 2023 to what they think will be fiscal year 2024. So from 297 opportunities to 614 opportunities. Again, remains to be seen when these results will materialize in actual revenue. And then for those that don't know, this is basically their global partner ecosystem. So they've partnered up with basically all the major cloud companies out there and then other big companies as well. You will see later on in this video where the majority of their well, bookings, their business is. Now, one analyst from Deutsche Bank wasn't really impressed by this meeting. And so it said this, the event left a lot to be desired as there were no details on financials, limited updates on the company's operations and investors did not really attend the event despite it being positioned as for them. While we appreciate the vast opportunity presented by AI, the event did nothing to ease our skepticism on the true differentiation of the company's platform, its traction with customers, or its ability to hit its constantly evolving financial targets. He also pointed out that in the recent 10K filings, it showed that the CEO has started a trading plan to sell shares, while also implying weak retention metrics and a couple of one-time items that actually boosted the company's operating margins in 2022. Now, it's hard for me to disagree with this point. I know another AI related company that always talks about companies that are basically PowerPoint companies and not result based companies. I'm not going to mention their name, but you probably know who I'm talking about. Now, if you want to have a basic overview of C3 AI, this is basically this. This is on Coifin, by the way. Link will be down in the description if you want 10% off. So it has a market cap of $4.64 billion. So you might say, wow. Still pretty small, there's lots of upsides. Yes, maybe, but still, if you look at valuation, EV to sales, next 12 months, 12.6 times there. I mean, with a market cap of 4.64, revenue for the year, I think is around $300 million or so. Still very, very expensive, especially when you will see the growth rates that we're currently at, which are not very impressive. Now, yes, it is true that analysts estimate that in fiscal year 2024 and 2025, we will see a lot more growth there, 14.6% for fiscal year 2024, so starting right now, and then for fiscal year 2025, over 20%. So that is promising. Now, if you're enjoying this type of video so far, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe. If you have not, would really, really appreciate that. And if you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comment to get the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to fool.com forward slash couch investor. Now, with regards to results and guidance that they gave us not so long ago, we can go to their presentation here for fiscal year 23, so Q4 highlights. 
nice numbers here, positive free cash flow of $16 million. That's great to see. If we look at the fiscal year 2023, so overall, we can see here again, nice numbers there. Subscription revenue, 86% compared to 82% in fiscal year 2022. But that's also because professional services has been decreasing. Now we jump straight to the guidance. So for fiscal year 24 Q1, they expect total revenue to grow 7 to 11% year over year, but to be basically flat quarter over quarter and maybe even experience negative growth there. Again, they can be sandbagging, but guidance right now for this foreign company that is AI driven, right? Rides with the AI wave. I mean, growth rate of 0% to 1% is not very, very impressive. Now for the full year, they expect to grow between 11 and 20%, which is basically around what the market is expecting. These were the numbers for Q4. So as you can see, revenue, right? Same as for next quarter and approximately the same as last quarter. So there is no real growth there right now. And you would expect a lot of growth given all the AI hype, right? If they're talking about, well, every company wants AI application, etc., etc. So you would like to see some results, but remember, the sales cycle is still pretty long. So we'll only see these results probably maybe in Q4 or fiscal year 2025. And by then, who knows what might happen? Now here they give us a bit the diversity of their bookings by industry. So it's pretty clear you can see it. oil and gas and federal aero and defense make up the majority of their bookings. And it's been like this for a while actually. And if we look at specifically Q4, we can see approximately the same thing. Energy, utilities, federal defense and aerospace make up around 70%. And then if you add oil and gas, well, you're basically over 80% of total bookings. But if we go a bit further and we look at pilots and trials diversity by industry, so last quarter, we can see a bit more diversification here. So manufacturing 15.8%, high technology 10.5%, and then all the smaller ones are approximately 5%. So there is a bit more diversification there in pilots and trials. That doesn't mean anything currently. Now, overall, if you want to look at the big picture here, I'll try and zoom in on these numbers. You can very, very clearly see total revenue, right? Same quarter last year, 72 million. Quarter this year is 72 million. Next quarter is expected to be approximately 72 million as well. But gross profit has been decreasing, net income losses have been increasing. So it's really hard to justify the price action right now, because I know the market is forward looking. And look, if we're looking forward and everything they say becomes reality, then yes, this company's financial will become much better. But how much of that future success is already baked in right now at $4.6 billion in market cap, up to 150% year to date, how much of that future success is already in the price today? In my opinion, a lot, if not most of it. Until we get better numbers, or can we get maybe a improved guidance for the year, which would justify the hype around AI and around their own company, then, then I would say, okay, maybe, maybe this is worth your money. But currently, I don't think I will take your money and invest it in such a company. That's just my opinion. Of course, you could disagree. And if you disagree, do share your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.